Hey everybody, this is Derek Skull with Gatekeeper Media. Beside me I have Christopher German. Hello everyone. And today we are bringing you the 2017 Heiser Philadelphia Open in partnership with Mr. Disc Golf and the Friends of Sedgley Woods, sponsored by Heiser Flip Disc Golf Apparel, made possible by Arsenal Discs. All right, so here we have a uh, hole one. This is from the Yellow Tees here at uh, Sedley Woods Disc Golf Course in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a par three at 281 feet. Um, pretty straightforward, right down, pretty low ceiling in the start, but it opens up after that. All right, so here we have Jay up on the tee pad. Um, he's uh, getting ready to wing it down the alley there. So he's representing Heiser Flip Disc Golf Apparel. He is one of the sponsored uh, members of the team. And, and it, he looks like he got it down there. Yeah, he flexed back on him, and he's in that opening down there. I mean, he's going to have a look for uh, look for two, look for Bird. All right, and, uh, up next we have Dan. Um, he is a uh, newcomer to the course, I believe. Uh, I believe so. I think this is the first time he actually played when I was out there talking to him. This is the first time he's ever been here. Um, a, so. little, a little high, it looked like. Yeah. But, and he, <laughs> that, that tree. That tree likes to uh, come out and, and grab your disc, that's for sure. Um, I've hit that tree many, many times playing here. This is uh, our home course here for Gatekeeper Media. And here we have uh, Jason up on the tee. So Jason's coming up, and that's looking pretty straight. And nope. that tree again. Yep, it looks like it flexed right out on and hit that tree. Jason is also a member of the Heiser Flip team, as well as Gleason here. So we keeping it low. A little skip action. He's going to be a little, a little far left. Yeah, he's definitely going to have a, <laughs> someone running down the course. I guess they messed up there. Um, so we do have a five-person card here today. Uh, last one coming up here is Chris Robbins. He uh, He's a local. He's a friend of Sedgley Woods. Um, this is definitely his local home course that he plays at almost every day. I, I see him out there all the time. We've so. played quite a few times, so I went and uh, we covered the 40th anniversary of the club and the course. Uh, so, it was really great. You know, there were a lot, of, a lot of really good people. Yeah, so he's definitely an active member. Um, he lets that one go, and that looks like that's going to come back. And, and just misses that tree. <laughs> <laughs> just got right, went right around it. So we have Jason here for his upshot. Uh, simple eyes are right in there. And, and that's a nice layup. Yeah, that's parked right there. He'll have a simple simple par there. We have Dan here with the sidearm. I'll tell you what, that was a good-looking sidearm. Bad roll there. Um, that should be a makeable putt. It's inside the circle, but be a little tester for him. Chris seemed to get pretty far right there. Ooh, look Great at that. Run. Yeah, he hit the basket on that one, so. Kevin is up here, and he just airballs that, and he's going to have a tester putt as well for his par. Come on, Jay. Jay for the and bird. and then <laughs> A little high. Really great run, though. He'll make par. So here's Dan for his par look, and he sinks it. So that was a good save there for Dan uh, after that, that upshot. It was a little farther than he probably wanted. All right, so we got Gleason here, Team Heiser Flip. So Gleason's coming in for his par here, and this should be a makeable putt. And there he is, and he sinks it. Chris is in there, and he should also have a simple one. Everyone else should probably tap out here. I mean, these are all pros. They've all played a lot of disc golf in their life, so... And some have played at this course, uh, you know, have the, the fortune to be familiar. Yeah, I believe Jay was actually a um, man coming up to putt right now. He won last year, so he was actually the winner of the 2016 Heiser Philadelphia Open. So he's looking he to regain kicked, that title. Kicked the marker there a little bit. <laughs> Had to readjust. All right. So, uh, so after uh, one hole, we have Jay two strokes ahead of Dan and Jason. Kevin is a stroke behind them at nine, minus seven, and Chris is another stroke behind at minus six after round one. So hole two, tell me about hole two. Hole two is a monster. Um, it's uh, 407 feet, uh, really sharp dog leg right. And you still got a little bit of a ways of, as you see here in the video. Um, you know, it, it's something that can definitely test you. Yeah, I would say the way that this hole is built, it's very hard to get a birdie on this hole. I mean, you have to have a monster drive, and that thing needs to flex back to the right. Um, this would be a really good shot for for a lefty, lefty. or or someone who was righty who had that good of a an annie. That good of an annie, yeah. All right, so we have a nice level shot here from Jay. It looks like he's going to get up there. He skips a little bit. 
he's pretty in, close to the edge. He's in the fairway. I think he's a little too far right for what he probably wanted. You want to be farther to the left because there's that, that tree hanging out, out there, so you might Very hit well. that. Um, Dan's up here, and it looks like he's going to go with the forehand, which would be the primarily the best play for a righty here if you're able to get that distance. Mm -hmm. That's all. I got a little. Uh, I got away from him. Um, I feel as though he, the release was just not what he was looking for. Yeah, and something he probably would want to take back. But I mean, from there, there is luckily a way to get through those trees. Um, very narrow, very narrow. Uh, but he he can save make, par. Makeable. Yeah, he can save par as long as he gets through there. If he pitches out, then he's going to be looking at a bogey. Jason's got. That he's hugging that left there. It's really holding that line strong for him, and he he has a manageable shot there yeah. for sure. From there, that should be a pretty simple up shot, and then look at and Gleason. Kevin with the roller. He's going for the roller. If that gets around right there, there's kind of a ditch down there, and uh, came out a little too early. If that kept going, that would have came back. That would have landed right at the bottom. He would have had a long look for for birdie. And it looks like that really held right. And Ooh, flexes, flexes back. Yeah, flexes back. That's actually probably. The he's best up shot. There. Yeah, that was probably the best shot out of everyone. He's definitely gonna have a look. And you got Jay's two here. It looks like it rolls back. It catches pretty, pretty heavy there. Yeah, I don't know what he hit there. It was probably the the basket or or a log. Here's that tight gap we were talking about. And, and he and he gets out. Yeah, and that's a makeable uh, par save there for him. Jay with a up shot right here, and, that's, and a really nice, yep. very nice layout. Textbook. Gleason after the roller, she's trying to get Annie. that out. And almost hit our camera guy here. That, <laughs> yeah, was, that, was, that was you. <laughs> that was me, yeah. <laughs> and Ooh. so close. Man, I'll tell you what, Chris, after two holes, both up shots were makeable putts that he definitely had runs on. Jason clean up with the par here. Gleason's probably going to come up here and, <laughs> and Dan, the Dan's over there. He thought he bounced a little further, but so he's got a little bit of a walk around to do. And Gleason here for the par save, and he's going to take that. So, so far, it looks like and everyone's going to be shooting par here, and after two holes, no change on the board. I'll take it. So we'll see here. This should be something Dan should be able to, to land. And he sinks it. Clean putt. I'll tell you what, for being such an old course, I don't know how the, ba the baskets are here, but I love the baskets here. I mean, I never, I don't know how you feel, but I never really get anything spitting out or... Uh, uh, no, me personally, no. Yeah, so, and, and everyone I talk to, I mean, they love the baskets here. That's It's not the prodigy or anything crazy, but it's catches the disc. So after two holes here, everyone pars out, so everyone stays even for the round. Uh, Jay's still with a two-stroke lead. All right, we got hole three. This is my favorite hole of the whole course. Uh, it's a really ideal shot for the uh, backhand righty. Um, so very nice, steady hyzer right there. You have a chance to park it right there or even ace yeah, from I would say blue tee. This is definitely an aceable hole from blue tee. Um, looks like Jay, Jay he, yeah. got a, he got a rough break there. Been in that woods a couple times. It looks like we saw Dan with the backhand. Was that right? Yeah, it was backhand. That was... Oh, that needed to stop rolling, but that was good right there. I mean, that's... Uh, it's in the circle. Yeah, it's a makeable bird. We got Jason here. He's going with that rip. Keeping it low. It's also in yeah. the circle. Very Mark. nice shot. So hole three is one of the three holes on the front nine that they're not shooting from the yellow tee boxes. They are shooting from the closer blue tee boxes. Just Kevin, so Kevin got a really unfortunate bouncer. Yeah, that's going to be a hard hard putt for Bird. Chris is up here, and his is looking pretty good. That's the exact line you're Ooh. looking for, but that bounce is not ideal. You want it to get down there just enough because you'll see that there's that little hill. If you hit that hill, it can really change the direction of the landing. That was a great – that's the example of being a fortunate bouncer. Ooh, and, and he clips the chains. And he gave that a run right there. So Gleason's probably going to have to settle for a par here. Chris, and ugh. Just not quite high enough. Just a little higher. He would have had that. Here's Jason for birdie, and he sinks it. So it looks like Jason's going to get a stroke back on Jay here with him uh, parring here. Same with Dan if he can make this. I mean, and clean putt again. So Dan and Jason are going to gain a stroke on uh, Jay here. Gleason's gonna tap in his uh, 
his par here. Having the higher ground is de definitely fares for for a better shot. It's uh, you do have the option of having a death putt here though, because drops off behind the basket pretty bad. Yeah, I've there's been many times where I've had ten footers or fifteen footers and I I missed the basket. Rolling down the hill. Like thirty feet. So here, Dan and Jason both land in the birdies, and then everyone else pars out. So they both get negative one for the round and gain a stroke on Jay. So hole four here, we have a 230-foot par three. Uh, this is also from blue tees, not the yellow tees, but this one's just a tight gap down a hill, and hopefully you park it. Out of both sides, if you're not going to stay center within that, uh, the left side is definitely the place to be. Yeah, I would say if you do fall off track of the, the fairway, you want to be the left side. The right side can be pretty heavy and a lot of trees you have to get through. Specifically mid-season when it's, there's a lot of leaves and things on the, Ooh. you know, so close. That's a CTP right there. That's, that's a good shot. All right. Gets Jeez. over. So his route was a little higher, so his definitely kind of faded faded out to the left there, but he still has a makeable putt. Yeah, that was one thing that I've learned about this hole is to keep the nose of the disc down. And it really helps carry it right through that gap. It's a nice little park there. It's a long putt, but it's make -able. make -able. It's something that Kevin should have no problem making. And then Chris here looks a little too far to the right. And, and he gets a bad kick. Bad kick, but honestly, that was a good kick for him. Because if he would have kicked to the right, he would just like we were talking about, at least he's to the left here. So yep. he, and um, so he's making his attempt and in. Wow, look at that. This was a miraculous uh, thing to see in person. Uh, it was... Yeah, really I'm, great bird save. That, yeah, that was a really, really good putt right there, man. That was amazing. He's also in for the bird here. I just want to go back to that play with Chris, and that's, I mean, that's a hard shot. He's He doesn't see what he's looking at there. He's just kind of chucking it out. And yeah, even being even being with him in the woods there, filming along with him, I couldn't see the basket from there either. So everyone's made birdie putts so far. We almost have a star frame. Let's see if Jay can... Can land this putt. This is a little far. I'd say it's probably 20 feet. Would you say? Uh, I would say probably. Yeah, 15 uh, to 20 feet. Yeah, I, I'd feel comfortable with that, and he makes it. It's great. I was having some camera difficulties yeah, you're there. Doing, you're doing something over there. Yeah, I was having the cold weather. I think was really affecting my gear. Uh, had the camera restart on me a couple times. And after that hole, when we get a star frame, everyone birdies out with Jay at negative 11, uh, Dan at negative 10, Jason at negative 10. All right, um, so hole five. The um, Now there are two baskets on this hole. We are going more for the traditional basket. Um, there is an elevated basket on five um, where I mainly play for that one. Yeah, we, when we go out and play, that's normally where we play from. All right. It, Gets a little kick, but it kicks him in the right direction. You know, he's got he's got a chance for um, a lane to take in anyway. Could be worse, but just lost that distance. Fortunately, if everyone else makes it up there, that will be a, a lost stroke on his part. As Jason comes up. And Jason really, really likes to hug the left side of that uh, that lane and keep it low. Uh, that was definitely the smart play. Um, saves you. Very, it's a safe shot. And he'll have a look for birdie. I lost track of it when I was filming right there. And that's a good shot right there by, by Jay. He's definitely, he's just got to look for birdie as well. We got Kevin up here. It flexes back and he gets through. Sorry, you still got a putt there. Yeah, I missed Pretty long. Even better putt. <laughs> he might be where that stump is where the other hole, where the other pin actually is. Which is still a pretty long Pretty long look there. All right, let's see what we have Chris doing here. All right, so it carries. Let's have it come over. That was a very good shot right there. I mean, once again, he's probably 20 feet away. I'm really glad that you got that angle here because I was in a bad spot. <laughs> that was a good up right there. I mean, he parked that. All right, Jason for that bird. And what a beautiful, beautiful putt. Yeah, I mean, those are the putts that win you the tournament right there. I mean, if you can land those types of putts consistently throughout the round, I mean, you're going to you're gonna take home the, the grand prize. And we were fortunate enough to really see some some talented individuals play here for those those long, 
long shots. And there's Kevin. He was right where we uh, right where we thought though. Yeah, and that was that was a great shot right there. I mean, that was that was a pretty long birdie make. And, then, and we have Chris here. He's he's got his ritual going on. And he uh, he made a very nice putt last last hole. So we'll see if he can. Uh, he wasn't feeling it there. <laughs> Had to dry it off, get the dust off. Feel like I have to be quiet. When he's <laughs> yeah, about to I putt. So I'm like, <laughs> I know I'm having the same feeling. It's, yeah. So this is our first time doing this. Yeah. So uh, thank you for for coming along the ride with us here. That was uh, that was a great another putt. Everyone's just putting very good right now. I don't think anyone's really had a missed putt. No, and it was really funny too because when this tournament started, it was it was cold that day. It was really cold. Um, but then as you start moving, you, you start stripping down the layers and it gives your m movement a little bit more. You got more range of motion. So after this, everyone's going to get a birdie here except for Dan. That's actually going to push Jason up ahead of him for the total score as he's negative three for the entire round. All right, so hole six, 232 feet, par three. Um, we are looking at uh, something that kind of gradually bends to the right there. So it's going to be an ideal shot for a lefty backhand or forehand, um, unless you can have a really steady high uh, Annie um, as backhand left. So yeah, that looked like that went a little far. Um, it's probably a little too far to the right. Kind of caught a glimpse of that. But uh, this is a, a pretty nice gap right here. I mean, if you if you take notice, there you'll you'll see a lot of handshakes and high fives throughout this this tournament here, this round, uh, the sportsmanship, and and um, just overall camaraderie of these players was is a really great thing to see. Uh, so one big community, you know. And it's really cool being the videographers out there and being able to capture that for these people and seeing the interactions that you might not necessarily see. He gets through. He's, he's that's down a, there. It's, it's a definitely a puttable shot. Ooh. See, and here, that's but that's the safe thing to play. Like it's it's a high risk, high reward. <laughs> but when you can hug that left side and just let it, Annie all the way right in. That was a park by Gleason right there. You know, as Chris looks like he's up there. He might be near those logs, so we'll have a long look. We got we got Dan here with uh, with the sidearm here. Chris, you want to talk a little bit about sidearm? I know that you're that's your yeah, predominant. Yeah, I, I prim primarily throw a uh, forehand sidearm. Um, I'm a lefty though, so funny enough, is a lot of it tailors towards me throwing a, a righty backhand almost. Um, so this even on this hole, I would probably still throw forehand, even though it's primarily made for a backhand lefty. And that that definitely that that sidearm shot by Dan really took a, a heavy hyzer. Mm -hmm. Ooh, he hits the basket again, man. I think that's the third or fourth time already that he's hit the basket. Another another donk. And Jason can't take that one in. And beautiful putt by Dan. Nice putt by Dan as he's going to gain that stroke back that he lost last hole. And clean putt by Jay as well. Nice bird. So you can definitely tell Jay knows this course. He's played this course before. Like I said, he won last year. Um, as everyone else is going to tap in here. Gleason's in for his birdie. And Chris taps in for par. All right, so after hole six, we have a birdie with Jay, Dan, and Kevin. Um, that puts Jay two strokes ahead of Jason and Dan, who are sitting at negative 11. So let's test about hole seven. Hole seven is uh, the 320 feet, uh, pretty straight shot down the lane and to the left. Um, so if you can keep a low righty backhand, that's gonna be a nice steady fade towards the basket. Um, there's some low hanging fruit to, to hit throughout the the lane there. Yeah, you can see those trees want to come out and grab that disc. I mean, but he makes it through all of them and, and parks it. <laughs> parks it. You got a little cloud going on there. Yeah, what was <laughs> happening over on the next hole there? All right, we got Kevin up here. Let's see what he's got going on. So Gleason's looks like it's yeah, his is going too far to the left there, and yeah. he's gonna ooh, happy tree. Yeah, happy tree right there. That's going to set him up for a nice upshot. And this tournament was a very open, open style. There was no out of bounds throughout the whole thing, so it, it left a lot of creativity out on the field. Mm -hmm. And especially with this type of course being such an old course, the you, some people have complained in the past that the tee boxes are pretty close to one another, where baskets and boxes are, are close. But, 
I mean, everyone was out there having fun today. Everyone was playing music, having fun. So it was a great event to be at. Ooh. He really gets that caught up in that. Yeah, I think he just released that a little too late, and he's going to have a really long look for a, for an upshot to save par. Yeah, it's all about playing safe there. Chris keeping it really low. It's going to hover real nice, get that little pop. Oh, nice skip. It's probably a little further back and to the right than he wanted, but unfortunately my camera cut out here as well, so... And that's a, that's a great layup by Jay, Jason, though, right there. I mean, he's going to save par with that shot. Dan trying to recover from that left or that right kick there. So Gleason's going to try to make this long putt for Bird. Come on, come on. Uh, it's it's good. Just faded on him. He was just a little more to the right. It was a good run, though. And this is, I think, the first up that Chris has not hit the basket <laughs> in the yes. past couple. Seriously. Yes, that's a good par save right Absolutely. there from Dan. Yeah, safe safe play in there. I mean, that was almost circle's edge. Close enough to not jump. Yeah. As Jason's going to also try to save par here. So they're trying to keep pace of Jay, knowing that he uh, parked that last shot. So Gleason's also going to go for par, and everyone else is going to par out, while Jay actually sits under the basket for his birdie. Yeah, so if you see, if you look down to the ground, you you will see Jay's disc there. It looks like it's the one closest to us um, right now. Um, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Um, actually, <laughs> there was a miscommunication there. We actually did not get Jay's birdie putt here, um, but he does make the shot. Yeah, you see him birdie. walking towards his disc right there. So uh, he did. He does make that. And gets his bird. So he's the lone bird and puts him three strokes ahead of uh, Jason and Dan here. All right, talk about hole eight here, Chris. So hole eight is another blue shot. Um, so there was three on the front nine. This is the third of them. Uh, this one's just a tight gap. Um, guardian tree there right to the right, as you can see. Um, this is a very short hole. So if you overthrow it, you can end up just too far and you have a really hard look. And that tree right there, I don't know how many times people have hit that. A that, big tree, and that's you know that's a really risky, risky lane to to go for. Um, it's super tight gap there. Yeah, and I noticed with the pros playing, I mean, I, when I go out wreck and see people play, everyone tries to go for that gap to the right of that big tree. But I noticed a lot of people actually went to the to the left of the tree. Uh, this is an example of that tight gap that he takes. And. That's park park. <laughs> so that's two parks by Kevin on the front nine. Kevin is 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 a pretty consistent player here. And you can see Dan doing the forehand really far to the right. Um, you can tell you can tell his reaction. He was not happy with how that that released. Yeah, that just that just came back on him too far. All right, Jason. What do we got going on here, man? So he's either going to go for an Annie to the left, or he's going to stay that tight hyzer route that Kevin took, and he's going to go the Annie route. Which, if you have if you have the right mold, the right weight, and and the right form. Anheuser shots can really hold on you, especially if you're not hitting a lot of wind. Yeah, and that, that was a good shot by him. He should be able to, to make bird on that. As Chris comes up here, let's see which route he's going to take. I'm guessing he's probably going to go to the right. He seems more of a risky player. Ooh, ooh. And that released. You could tell it just popped right out of his yeah, hand. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, he's going to have to fight through a lot of trees here. He's definitely in the rough. And you will see that he... Unfortunately, does not make it through. Yeah, so he does have a clear look from here, though, and that's going to be a long shot there. Ooh. And we got a pretty quick shot here of his tap in. Yeah, I think he was a little upset. He kind of ran over and tapped that in real quick, so he did get bogey on that hole. That was Looks a, like Dan's was really low. Yeah, that was a long look for him. As Jay's going to, yeah, he's going to tap in the bird and keep pace with Jay. Gleason's also going to pop in a bird. After an amazing drive. And I believe this is also for Bird for Jay. Yeah. And we have uh, Dan stepping up for his par save here. And he's going to par that. So it looks like Dan's going to lose a stroke on the leaders here. Um, as Kevin's actually going to tie up with Dan. And that puts Jay still three strokes ahead of Jason. The middle section of our card, it's a really tight, tight race here. All right, we have a uh, hole nine here, 294 feet. Um, we have a huge guardian tree right next to the basket. So ideal shot is to stay to the right of that tree, let it fade right underneath the basket. It's easier said than done sometimes. 
Yeah, I would, I would say so. Um, getting past that tree on the initial drive at this level, I mean, that's a, it's a good shot to really go because it is a slightly uphill. And it's a pretty tight gap, as you can see, the fairway there. Looks like he clips a tree. The sun was a little bright there. Very. I like <laughs> I like the uh, the flare on Lorenzo. The artistic look to it. Yeah. That was a great shot by by Gavin there. As he's gonna have a, a straddle putt, but it's makeable birdie. That almost looked like it was ready to turn over on him there, but it f f flattened right out. Yeah, I wonder what this that was, because that flattened right out and nice little glide, and he ended right where Kevin was. Dan keeps it a little high, and he gets a little kick, unfortunately. But from over there, I mean, you definitely, I would rather be to the left than the right. I've been to both sides, obviously. Um, the left side is, is a much easier path compared to the right, because the right has those really low trees, kind of where Chris is hanging over there. Yeah. Um, you can really get stuck behind those trees where over there to the left, where the other tee boxes are, you can kind of take a back route. Kind of what uh, Dan's doing right here. He uh, he spiked it in there. Yeah, that was, was a great shot. Got another another heavy hyzer coming in. And bounced over, bounced a little far. A little far. I mean, it's going to be a tester for for his par there. As Chris is kind of on the right side of the fairway that we talked and about. Spike hyzer. <laughs> and watch this thing drop like a bomb. Wow, that. that was impressive. As Kevin's going for the bird and straddle. makes it. So. Drop a knee straddle putt. Great birdie. Great birdie by Kevin. We're going to get some of that camaraderie right here. Really, really great to see. Everybody's here just to have a good time. Winning's nice too, though. So I know Jason's going to try to keep pace, uh, knowing that Jay is at least going to get a par here. He's going to at least gain one stroke on him. Being three strokes behind, that's a that's a big putt for Jason right there. Keeps him keeps him right on the heels of Jay. And this is a this is a big putt for Jay here. I mean, if he doesn't make this, this is a two stroke swing on uh, on the card here. Say about 15 Line feet up. away. Taking his time and Ooh. too high. That's that's very unfortunate for him. You can tell he's a little upset. Ended in the uh, the front nine, getting a bogey after playing so good. Yeah, it's a, a it's a feeling that I've I've felt unfortunately too many times. Very unfortunate, but uh, I mean, he's previous champ. He's he'll bounce back, and I'm sure in the back nine he'll, he'll put together a solid showing. As everyone else here is gonna tap in for their pars. Which you know, ending your ending your first half of the, this round with a, a par shot is could be worse. So with that there, I mean that two stroke swing, that actually puts Jason just one stroke behind Jay. Kevin's only tailing him by a stroke. He gained one on Dan, who's at minus 11, and Chris is trailing, kind of falling behind at negative seven. He did have that tough break there. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna conclude our back nine coverage here. Uh, Gatekeeper Media presents the 2017 Heiser Philadelphia Open. Big shout out to Mr. Disc Golf, to Arsenal Disc, uh, Heiser Flip Disc Golf Apparel, and the friends of Seswick Woods for allowing us to uh, cover this event.